Okay, everyone, so we should see that there's a lot of uh, a lot of details to get all of this to work. And once it all works, it's pretty smooth sailing, but of course, it's the details that, uh, that get in the way. So, um, obviously, I have to balance teaching a whole class and, and helping individuals. So, always be mindful about how much can I help individuals and then also the class. But I've got at least my, uh, my device showing my project at this point. And I'm going to show you something here that could be very helpful for us, but unfortunately it's not going to work for everyone. Um, this is the thing that we're going to see a lot of times with Android, unfortunately. There's so many versions of Android. There's this version that's slightly different on Motorola. There's this version that's slightly different on HTC. There's a slightly different one on Samsung. Android is great because it's open source and different companies can change it and such. But we see the downside of that, that my screen looks different than your screen, my device de behaves different than yours, etc. So that's always the challenge to do this. So here's one of the differences right here that probably a lot of people will see. And oftentimes it's, I need to give the answer, if it doesn't work on your device, I can't help you, it doesn't work. And so I have to show in general what I can with the most amount of people. And of course, during lab time and such, I can help individually. But here's something that hopefully will work on yours. I want to see my device so I can debug it. I, can, I want to see the, Java, the JavaScript console output and such. And previously, we talked about uh, monitor but we have a version of it that for some of us will work better than others and what I mean by that is it depends on your version of Android if you've got an older version this won't work if you've got a newer version this will probably work so here's what we're gonna do I've got it running on my device so number one if you don't have it running on your device uh, that's a difference already but let's try this I've got it running and what I'm gonna do is open Google Chrome if you don't have Google Chrome running let's open your Google Chrome browser Google Chrome, because it's a Google product, and so is Google Android, it's a Google product, these have this sort of compatibility that's very cool. Um, so this is one difference already that we're going to see. Do you see on the very top right corner, uh, these three little icons here, that's the uh, customize and control Google Chrome, that's the settings. Do you see those three little uh, icons on the top right? Click on that. On my particular version of Chrome, I see more tools. Do you see more tools? Raise your hand if you see more tools. Good, because I, I do need to see what you guys see. Okay, within here, do you have an entry that says inspect devices? Raise your hand. Two people. So other people don't. Okay, if you do see inspect devices, click on that. If you don't see inspect devices, up on your address bar, type the address Chrome colon slash slash inspect. Try that. If you didn't see the inspect devices menu item, try this. And then someone that typed this, I need to see over your shoulder. What does it look like? Chrome colon slash slash inspect devices. Um, you go with the same type. No, you go to chrome colon slash slash inspect. I mean, you go through at the Uh, okay, so what loads up here, hopefully, is Chrome, the, in, the inspector, and um, this is so weird, but in older versions, it is backwards, in older versions of Chrome, you have that little setting, more tools, inspect devices. On newer versions, they took that away. And so you have to type Chrome, colon, slash, slash, inspect. And what that does is it brings up this inspector that sees devices. 
and it sees on mine, for example, Android SDK XT1528. Well, what does that mean? My device internally is known as, it's a Motorola Moto E, but internally it's the XT1528. And I've got my current project loaded up. And it's saying, um, I've got, look at that, com.jones.mysdce. It, it sees that my app is running. This is where we're going to have variation. If you've got an older device with uh, Android 3, let's say, it's not going to show up here. You're going to need Android 4.4 and higher. So if you've got a 4.1, this device right here is 4.1, doesn't work. I've got another one here, Android 2.3, doesn't work. I've got this one, 5.0, it works. So mine is seeing, it's seeing my device, my Motorola right there, and it's seeing my project right here. If you do see your project there, click Inspect. And if this works, you're going to see your app, live version of your app in your web browser. And you can control your device from the web browser. Obviously, this is pretty amazing if it works for you. Yeah, exactly. If it doesn't quite work, it's just going to show you this HTML off on the side. So raise your hand if it, if it works, that you do see your device like that. One out of 20, well, unfortunately. That's okay. So that's why I bring this up, but monitor still will work for us. So here, uh, you know, I'll be able to load up everything that's on my device, basically. So I am controlling it on my, on my web browser. You need a newer device. Um, Android 4.4 and higher on your device. And so this will allow me to to see the code and even you know see the code and edit the code just like a web page because technically it's a web page existing in our project. Now all is not lost because you will, I, I believe you will still be able to do the same on a virtual device. If you've got a virtual device, I'm going to do Cordova Emulate Android. I'm going to wait for that to emulate. And then on Google Chrome, if I believe this will work, I've got my real device, and I believe when this is done up on my virtual device, it should let me access my virtual device. Let's see. So this only works on Google Chrome because Chrome is a Google software and the Android uh, operating system is Google software. So this doesn't work on Firefox, different companies. And then you have the limitation also that this has to work on relatively modern versions of Android. Okay, here we go. So I'm running it on my virtual device. And here it popped up. Android SDK, virtual device basically, Jones, inspect. So I can inspect it there too. So if you don't get the, the aspect of, of it being on the real device, you'll have an aspect of it in the virtual device. Um, obviously, there's no thing to control here because you just control it there. But you do see all of the code. Um, you know, you can 
you can use that inspector. You can use this inspector like a web page to edit dynamically the app. This code, however, is not saved to to your project like if we were editing Notepad. This is just the inspector to help us uh, work with our HTML or with the console. But uh, basically, I'm bringing this up because for some of us, we will be able to use the Chrome inspector to control our device and then debug it when we get to that point, looking at the console when things break. So if it worked for you, very good. If it didn't, well, again, we will get back to using monitor.bat, which we saw last time. Any questions on this? Okay, so we had done a little digression here because we were still looking at instruction 7 about importing our web app to Cordova. That's what we had last done in Notepad. We copied this code over and we edited the, uh, the content security policy to let our JavaScript work by adding unsafe inline. If we get back to our instructions here, um, we could at this point technically delete the old index file. We've taken the code from it that, that we needed and we don't need that anymore. I'm not going to delete it just yet, but I, I will eventually. We don't need that index file anymore. Index 2. We've got the current index file. I want to continue with number 10 here. I need to edit now my Kodika JavaScript file. So back on our Windows folder here, we have index. We have Kodika CSS, Kodika JavaScript. Let's edit the Kodika JavaScript file. So right-click kodika.extra.js, edit with notepad. If you are uh, using my example from the network folder, the my SDCE that I gave you, this is basically what we ended up on the last day of class. But I think I added a couple little comments here. Um, or did I? I don't remember. No, I think it's the same as what we ended up on the last day. But my instructions say edit the Kodika file. As the first line of code, we're going to add this line here document.addEventListener. Event I'll explain what it does in just a moment. So uh, I guess right after where we've got put your custom code here, line two. Actually, I'm going to give myself some breathing room. So. I'm going to give myself empty line 2 and 4, just a little space for readability, doesn't matter. But uh, we're going to start a brand new line 3 here, and we'll type document dot add event listener. Listener, open close parentheses, semicolon. Add event listener, we've uh, We've written that code a little bit before uh, on part one of the class, an event listener. This is waiting for something, waiting for something to happen, an event. We've attached this method to this object. Remember this concept, objects and methods. Methods are the command, the function with the parentheses. This is a method of this object, the document. So the document is basically the whole project. And we're waiting for something. We're listening for something. We're listening for an event. There could be many events, such as a click. If I click somewhere, that's an event that fires, and then I could do something about the click. I can do something about double clicks. I can do something about click and drag. Here we're waiting for an event. So inside of the parentheses, open close quotes. And inside of the quotes, we're waiting for the event called device ready. One word lowercase. Did 
device ready. There is an event that happens. Once all of our code loads up, especially the cordova.js file, once the cordova.js file and everything loads up, automatically, then my app emits an event called device ready. So then this thing is waiting for that. Once it, once it sees that device ready, we can do something else. And this is standard. We always need this on all of our Cordova projects. All of our Cordova projects will always have this. Regardless if it's Android or iPhone or whatever. This event listener method needs one more thing. Okay, we're waiting for device ready, but then what? Furthermore, my instructions say we're going to add comma on device ready, comma false. I'll explain that in a moment, but let's type it. Comma space on device ready. Notice capital letters on device and ready, comma space false. This command comes from Cordova. If we go to apache.cordova.org, the official Apache documentation, one of the very first things that it'll teach us there is do this. It always needs this in order to fully function. It needs to attach this event listener to the document, waiting for this event. This right here will vary it because this is a callback function. This is a function that we will invent. There's no function called on device ready in all of JavaScript. We're going to invent it. Therefore, this can be called anything, such as ready to rock. That would be perfectly fine. We just create a function called ready to rock. So this is not, this is not, uh, you know, set in stone. That could be any named function. This function happens once device ready happens. And false is just something according to the documentation that we need to add there. So we'll just take it at face value. So once device ready happens, we want to deal with our app being ready because we need this in order, we need the device to be ready in order to do the cool things such as take a photo, um, access the contacts of the device, um, place a phone call, you know, all the cool things that our device can do that a web page can't. We can't access those things until the device is ready. Next line, line 5, now we need to define that. So function space on device ready. We need to explain what on device ready actually does. And this we've seen before. We've created functions before. We named them whatever we wanted. We had the parentheses open, close, curly braces. That's a, that's a general skeleton to define a function. And a function, remember, is basically our own JavaScript that we invent a sequence of JavaScript commands that we, that we bundled together or basically invented on that name, that name function on device ready. So remember to spell this exactly the same as that. You can um, misspell it, but it, as long as you keep it misspelled consistently, it will work. The only thing that I want to do here as a proof, proof of concept is I want to make a simple alert, simple pop-up, it says device ready. We can do console output also, but this will be more obvious. Okay, to see if this all works, you want to save both the HTML and the JavaScript file and run it on your device. So whatever device you have. So check, uh, check your spelling here. I'm going to run it on my real device. What should happen is your, um, your app will load as normal, and then eventually you hopefully get a pop-up that says device is ready. 
because that's what I've written so far. Once a device is ready, make a pop-up, basically. Um, you can actually, if you simply go Cordova run Android or Cordova emulate Android, it will actually do Cordova build for you first. So sometimes we run Cordova build just to prepare ourselves, and but we can actually skip it and just go to correctly directly to Cordova run Android or Cordova emulate Android, and it does build for us. When do we have to put build? Um, sometimes when we've uh, We've written our code and and we've tested it and it works and all I'm changing is to say um, ready to rock right I don't need to go through the whole process to check does it really say ready to rock I know it's going to so I can just do code of a build and we're done here it's popping up there we go alert device is ready anyone need any help at this point did you get the device ready running it
Working in any layer. Okay, I've been working the browser. Mm -hmm. And now my, uh, my command window is frozen. If your command window is frozen, what you'll have to do is on the on the keyboard, uh, press control C and hopefully that will unfreeze it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, back, and then to further answer your question. Uh, well, I guess if you see the result in at least one of the ways to test it, then we're good. Yeah. If it didn't show up in the browser, okay, that's annoying. But if it showed up in the virtual device, good. Yeah. If it showed up on your real device, good also. Question here. Good question. Um, I have so many of uh, the inspecting and Okay, on the inspect, uh, you should be looking at the package um, okay, this is your something mm -hmm. and so that's test two my SDCPM browser so uh, probably that one is uh, is that one's mine wait it's, I'm running your test so oh, okay basically. so that's the one you should inspect um, so just basically they just like plug phone the, the real phone and yeah, exactly. Like your virtual exactly. That's your virtual devices right here. And your phone here is well, it might not always be in that order, but mm -hmm. yours is SM6 or SMG900P. That's yours. So it might be first or second, but that's what you do. Okay, so um, the point of that was that we've got. One of the basic uh, Cordova commands, um, this ensures that all of the Cordova infrastructure is ready to, to work with. Uh, so this is, this is a simple event listener waiting for this specific event. We have other events that could happen. There's an event that happens when I'm on my app and I go to the home screen. Now that was an event, I think it's called device paused or something. So that event fired and I could wait for that event and have something happen, such as save my high score. Then when I load the app again, another event loads up. I think it's called um, device resume. So there's a list that we can look up at apache.cordova.com, uh, cordova.apache.org. We can look up the possible events and then we can look for them, wait for them to happen, and do things. There's an event when you, when you raise and lower the volume. So we can say every time you raise the volume, it, it pops up with something. That's the whole point of event listeners. Something happens, and you deal with that result. In this case, simply device ready. So let's actually look at that. On your web browser, let's go to... On your web browser, let's go to uh, cordova.apache.org. Let's memorize that address, cordova.apache.org. It's on my notes, of course, but um, cordova.apache.org. Well, they're doing some sort of a survey here. It might be cool for you guys to answer that survey, but uh, at the top, let's click on documentation or click the, docu the big blue documentation button. Let's go to the documentation. Uh, 
This is the manual. On the left side on the table of contents, near the bottom, you will see a chapter called Events. So let's go to Events here on the left side. Event types. Device ready. Pause, resume, back button, etc. So we can have start call button. Let's say you've got your app running. It's a game. You get a phone call and you click to answer the phone. The, the start call button event happened. So then in your code you can do something in your app to deal with that event. Eventually the app will end so then the end call button event fires and then with your JavaScript you deal with that event. So let's say I want to learn, okay, uh, what, what can I do about device ready? Click on device ready. And look at that. Document.add event listener, device ready. They called it here, your callback function. So this is what I'm saying. Don't literally always think in this case that it has to be called on device ready. Many tutorials are going to use many different names. But how would I know that? I would read the I would read the manual and it would tell you the second parameter here is your own function. This event is essential to any app. It signals that Cordova's device APIs, the infrastructure, has loaded and is ready to access. And it works on all the platforms basically. Here's a quick example. Oh, there's on device ready. And then the function on device ready. Now safe to use device APIs, such as taking a photo with the camera. Full example. Well, it shows you everything, everything there. On number, still back on instruction number seven, um, we're basically finishing that first part where we've migrated the app. It, it came over to our to our project, um, our our Android project. But taking a step back, if we go back to the folder here, we took some code from index two and we put it into index. We no longer need index two, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to go back to my project folder and then delete my index two. You can leave it if you want, but I'm going to delete it because it's not necessary. The code that I needed is now an index. And so we've added the, the brand new Cordova code to index. We also need to add that to directory, to dir HTML. dir is what makes the map work. And it seems to work, but it doesn't have the power of Cordova. We wouldn't be able to, in the map screen, for example, let's say take a photo, because dir doesn't know that it's a Cordova project. So let's edit the dir file to copy the same file, the same lines from index into dir. So. Let's open DIR in Notepad. I want to see them side by side. Index with DIR. <coughs> so um, we need to copy. Uh, line 5 down to 17. From the index file, da uh, 5 down to 17, which is the comment, the start of that comment, down to the meta tag viewport. So select all of those lines and copy them. And we'll paste them, let's see, we'll paste them um, right after the car set, above title. 
So our line numbers will line up actually, line 5 on index and line 5 on DIR. Right, so this is a DIR file, and I paste it, the comment all the way down to the viewport, and then there's the title. So title is line 18 on both, on both files. to be consistent with, with the index file. Remember at the index file, all the way at the end, we've got that line, script Cordova.js, line 267. Let's copy that Cordova script file, and we'll put it all the way at the end of our project as well uh, on the DIR file. Let's put it on line 130. <clears throat> so now that we've got now that we've added Cordova JS, now if we wanted to, we could use all of the power of Cordova to enhance our map. Maybe let's say when we get to this later and we integrate social media into our app we will be able to send a tweet with our map but that wouldn't work until this was an app and this is an app once we've got Cordova JS. If you have a keen eye and you look inside of the WW folder of our project there is no Cordova.js file. That's okay it's not going to exist in our project www folder but Cordova adds it whenever we do Cordova build or Cordova run or Cordova emulate it adds that file when we need it so if you don't see it here don't worry because this is saying let's access the file Cordova.js but our folder doesn't show it anywhere that's okay Cordova adds it when necessary save both files and this might have been a point where I could do Cordova build and move on because I'm not gonna look at this result I just know that it works I could of course do Cordova run Android Cordova emulate Android uh, but you can simply do Cordova build and I'm gonna move on that, that might be one of the reasons why we could simply do Cordova build because I'm not I don't need to run it I just wanna have my code updated but I don't wanna see the result I'm going to let that go in the background because I want to look over the next instruction here. Cordova opens up a variety of features of your device, now accessible to your app. We will use the in-app browser to open external content within our app. What's going on here is we have a Cordova command that will allow us to use something called the in-app browser. So before we type this, let's see what what is in app browser. I'm going to go back to the to the website Cordova. Go back to the Cordova website, and let's scroll down on the left side to find at the bottom plugin APIs, plugins. All those plugins we added previously, camera, geolocation file, in app browser. <coughs> Let's go to plugins. You can check the device's battery status, etc., etc. But I want to read about what is in app browser. So if you scroll down alphabetically, you will see in app browser. Launch addresses in another in app browser instance. Okay, well, let's click on in app browser to read more. That'll take us to the full documentation with examples. <clears throat> so 
So uh, this documentation gives you explanation at the top. I'm going to scroll down to cordova.inatbrowser.open. So we have the object cordova uh, for the .inatbrowser, and then the method .open. And here it is here, cordova.inatbrowser.open. And it takes a few parameters, URL, target, options. So again, it explains everything here. Um, URL, the, the web address that you're trying to load, comma, target, the target which, which to load this. This is actually optional, um, but we're going to use blank. We want it to open in a new window. So you've probably used various apps where you're browsing the app, you click on a link, and then like a mini web browser opens in the app. That's what we're getting at. We're opening a mini web browser from within our app. But right now, the way it works is if you go to the art screen and you click on catalog, it's going to open Safari or Chrome. It's going to open a completely different app to display my website, taking the user out of your app and maybe losing them. So we're going to open the college's website within our app, and that's the in-app browser. And we can have an option of location yes, which is basically, do you want the back and forward button on your little browser? And uh, usually we'll do yes. So that's, you've got other options here that you can look at yourself, like zoom level and all that stuff. But uh, in my example code here, we've we've got um, we've got it written out for us. So so reading over what we're about to do in the JavaScript file, we're gonna create a brand new function called get URL. We're gonna pass a parameter into it, the URL. And then from within that function, we're going to write window.open. The particular address, blank, location, yes. So this is just what we read in the documentation. So let's try that. In, uh, in Notepad, we're going to go back to the Kodika JavaScript file. I'm going to comment out the alert. I don't want it to pop up every time. I know this works, but I don't need that pop up every time. And we'll do it like this for the moment. Uh, line 9, let's create our function like I have in my instructions. Function get URL. So we're inventing our own function. going to open a web page, get that web page, load it up. And almost all the time when we've worked with functions, we define the function and leave the parameters, no parameters. This one, we do need a parameter, which we're calling the URL. So what we're doing is we're passing an option, we're pass passing a parameter. We're asking, well, what address are we going to when we click the link? that address is going to change on this link and on that link and on this link. So we're saying, okay, we need an address in order to go to the address. Inside of the function, we've got open curly brace, close curly brace. Inside of the function, we're going to write window.open. The window object, we're going to open a brand new, a brand new website. And don't write this, but what we would have normally done was, in quotes, written http colon slash slash yahoo.com. Well, then this get URL function would always take us to Yahoo. But I want to have a function that is more generic, that I can reuse. 
this function would always take us to Yahoo, no matter if we attached it to this link or that link or that link. I want it to instead change depending on the link that I've clicked. So instead of putting in a hard-coded address, I'm using this variable, so to speak, the URL. Whatever parameter, whatever website I'm feeding into it here will then be used here. No quotes because quotes means a string, and a string means literally go to the website called the URL. No, we want to go to the website yahoo.com, google.com, comma, space, in quotes, underscore blank, the documentation says use this parameter to open it up in its own little window. If we didn't do that, it would take over the whole screen of our app instead of into its own uh, its own separate web browser. Comma, space, quotes, location equals yes. So we're saying here, um, show the location bar show the backward and forward buttons and the address like a web browser. If we don't want it to display, we can put no, and then it, uh, it wouldn't be, I don't think it would be as user-friendly because then a person would be confused. Well, how do I go back now? Okay, so that's our code for get URL. This, this function should open an external website whenever we need it to. So that's usually part one of doing this. Part one is we write the function. Part two is we use the function. So did everyone write the function? Part two, going on here, okay, we need to go back to our index file and from last month we had a we had a line in here where we where we were linking to the college's website we need to change that code a little bit to instead use the brand new function we just made up so in notepad let's go back to index and let's go to line 145 Line 145 is that spot where we've got a link to the college's website. We've got href and then rel. Right after, well, right after target, let's add on click equals when we click this button run this function get URL the one we just invented but this function expects a web address which goes inside of the parentheses which has to be in quotes. But we've already got quotes, double quotes, right here and right here, don't we? We run into that issue and we want to put quotes inside of quotes. So we want single quotes right there. And then we can put the college's web address, http colon slash slash sdce.edu. So this whole part here is, if we didn't have Cordova, this wouldn't work. We've got that Cordova.js file that allows a mini web browser to open in our app. That wouldn't work as if it was a plain old website. Because we're doing it this way then, target blank is irrelevant, and rel is ir irrelevant. So let's actually delete those two. Let's delete target blank and rel external. 
Let's delete them. Now we only have href and on click. And what we need to do with href is take out the website and just put a pound sign. The pound sign is to make the link behave like a link, but not actually go anywhere, because we're making it go somewhere with get URL. If we have five other buttons to take us to five other websites, we would just reuse get URL and put in the appropriate website. Yes. Is that the only format in CPP or the For this web address right here? Yeah. We should put the whole protocol. We should put HTTP colon slash slash whatever. Don't forget that part. You could put in the WW part here too. That's fine. But what you do have to remember, Good. definitely need is the is the address there. If you didn't if you did it like this, www dot that that might not work. Because it doesn't know the protocol. And the protocol is HTTP. Okay, so um, this is this part here. Run your project and text your, test your link. Okay, so then that requires to to do the whole uh, running thing. So let me show you a trick here. Uh, I'm I want to run it in my in my uh, real device and my virtual device and my browser. So I would do uh, run browser, blah, blah, blah. But you can actually do them all kind of at once, like this. Cordova, run, Android, space, and, and, space. You can chain commands together with the double and. So it will do the first command, and when that's done, then it will do the next one, and the next one, and the next one. This is, uh, this is not anything about Cordova or anything like that. This is built into the command prompt. Cordova run Android, and, and. Cordova emulate Android, space, and, and. Cordova um, run browser. So this is going to hit them all, if I've got all three, of course. It's going to run Android first, and then, uh, then emulate it, and then run the browser. And then you press Enter, and it'll do them. Not that they will all happen at once. It'll happen in sequence. First one, and then the next one, and then the next one. So if you've got... If you've got um, any of those devices active, they'll, they're all going to run. And um, if, before uh, I'm going to head something off, everyone's going to have a problem here uh, because of the content security policy. I'm doing this on purpose. This is not going to work, but I want everyone to see that it's not going to work because we want to check do we have any console log output? What happened? I don't understand. Let's check the console. I know that there's going to be a problem here, but we need to become savvy developers. When someone is not around to tell you the answer, you need to figure it out. So I'm going to bring up the console in a moment. Let this load up, and then we'll talk about what, what went wrong. Okay, so it did one command, and now it's going to do my virtual device. Okay, so I'm going to go on the art screen. I have calendar and catalog. I click on catalog. And then I'm, uh, I click it, and then it actually it did. It did load up the, the website on my in-app browser. I've got a mini browser in my app, then I can close that and I'm back on my device. That's odd. I thought it wouldn't work. Let's see if it doesn't work on the virtual device.
let's see, here comes my virtual device. I go over to the art screen. I have that catalog button. That's the one that would open in a separate web browser. But now it's an app, so I'm going to click on it. Okay, did it. So it opened up in a mini web browser within our app. We've got a back button, forward button, address, and close. That was location equals yes. It opens up in its own mini window because that had underscore blank. And then it's opening up in, in this address because we had get URL. I can navigate around on this and click on different things. And it works like a real browser. And then I click the little X and I'm back in my app. on my browser. Let's see how it works on the browser. Art, catalog, guess it worked. When I was testing this a couple of days ago it didn't work and I had a solution for it, but what about you? Did it work for you guys? No? Does it look like it's gonna pop up but it never loads up? Yeah. What do you see? Do you see at least the the back and forward buttons and such, but nothing in the middle? What does it look like over here? How did yours? So, so I click on so if it didn't work here's what's going on the content security policy the content security policy if it didn't work the content security policy is not letting you open an external website so mine did work but I'm gonna show you anyway what you need to do in case it didn't work we go back to the very top of the screen line 14 Again, line 14, content security policy. This is allowing and disallowing things to happen. For some of you, what's happening is it's disallowing an external website. Um, so on the content security website, we've got something called frame source. <coughs> defines valid sources for loading frames, for loading, for loading external websites. So we need to add the, the frame source um, parameter and let it open it from the college. So what that means is line 14. Let's go all the way to the end. This is where we said let JavaScript work, semicolon source or style for CSS. Let, uh, let uh, the, the, the CSS from within the project itself work and also unsafe inline CSS semicolon media source. Basically you let anything, a little star is a wild card which means everything or anything. Media source. Let everything that is media related work. I need to add one more item here according to the specification. I need to say, okay, now let external websites load in my frame. So, so uh, this little asterisk, we're going to add a semicolon right here, space. And we're going to add a new directive, which is frame-src. Space. We're saying what can we load in the frame? We want to learn. Ex we want to load external websites. I want to learn load a website from sdce.edu. I want to allow to open up websites from sdce.edu. But again, computers are very specific. This is actually not um, universal enough. Because we have www.sdce, we might have, I don't know, jobs.sdce.edu, we might have students.sdce.edu. So actually, our, our address will be asterisk dot 
sdce.edu. So any web page on the sdce server I can load in my frame. What we're going to do at this point is save it, and we're getting close to the end of the day, so you should save this and run it to check it if it works or not. And then we're going to go, uh, we're going to end the main lecture at this point and have some lab time. We've covered a lot of things, you've got a lot in your mind perhaps. We're going to stop then to do the lab time and such. But I went through everything on number seven here basically, uh, and this is, this is the nature of the class this month that we're going to be writing this code in Notepad. We're going to then be running it in the device and we're going to be adding more features to our project, more more Android specific features like social media and camera stuff, but that's why this stuff is complicated. That's why uh, apps cost thousands of dollars to develop because this stuff even if we were only using Android Studio, right here we're using like 10 things, right? Too many things. If we were only using Android Studio, this would still be a big uphill thing, a big uphill battle, because we'd have to learn all of this code, test it, make sure our device works, oops, wrong version of Android doesn't work. So even if we were just in the safety of Android Studio, we'd still be running into problems left and right. But honestly, look at the, look at the end result. I've shown you these examples of students from previous semesters. I've shown you examples of students that they came into this class not knowing anything. Now, not a lot of them get to the end, but students do go from month one to month three with no experience. And again, you're not going to make the next Instagram app. You're not going to make the next Snapchat, but you're going to have this knowledge of taking your web apps to devices. And there's a lot of moving pieces, but that's why I try to build in a lot of help time. So we're going to end the main lecture Final questions of what we looked at today? I'm going to put a copy of my work into the network folder if you want a copy. I'm uploading the videos, of course. We watch the videos over the weekend because, in short, this stuff does work. I've been doing it for years. It works. So uh, we're going to end at this point to make sure you've signed in and we'll do some lab time.